What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another VGC video. I didn't say Sword and Shield because I am of the opinion that we are going to be moving to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl for the next VGC games, or for the next competitive season. Now, some people, I, I was under the impression that we were all on the same page, that, that a majority of people were actually thinking we're moving to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but... I put out a poll just out of curiosity, and a lot of people were actually thinking, no, we're not. In fact, a slight majority, 47 believe we are, 53% believe we're not moving to Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, which obviously we have no way of being 100% certain, but I want to give my thoughts out as to why we probably are, and this is coming from someone who has been playing VGC since 2015, so that might not sound like it matters because, you know, Game Freak works in weird ways, uh, but I'll, I'll explain, right? So... Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. A lot of people consider them to be controversial games. I really don't mainly, like, it's it's just the art style that people don't like, which I think is kind of dumb, like, whatever. Like, are, are you really playing for the art style? I'm playing for the competitive part, just because I'm a competitive player. Like, I, I care about the battles more than anything. In fact, I didn't even like Gen 4 that much. I just want to play a non-Dynamax format. But if we take a look, a lot of people are saying it's going to be given the let's go treatment. In my opinion, Probably not. A lot of the items that exist today for competitive battling existed back then. The X items, uh, EV training is the exact same as it was now as it was back then. So there's no nostalgic reason to exclude the competitive side of the game, sort of like with Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, where you didn't really have to EV train anything in Gen 1, um, and they weren't trying to shoot horn in this uh, catching gimmick. In fact, if we actually take a look at the game's trailer, and these are old screenshots, of course, it looks a little bit different now, but the art style in game or in the battles is very similar to what we see now. There's a trainer standing behind the Pokemon. Granted, outside it's very chibi, but in battle, you see a 3D camera moving around trainers who stand behind their Pokemon in battle. And it all looks very similar to what we have now. Granted, Sword and Shield has a slightly different art style in battle, but you, you get what I mean. Like, it's the same, relatively speaking. Also, the way that they actually word it is the remakes are easy to understand, player-friendly, or easier to... <laughs> I don't know why I can't see, or why I can't speak today. These remakes are, include easy to understand, player-friendly conveniences of the modern Pokemon series. So my take on how this is going to work is it's going to be a faithful retelling, faithfully reproduced Gen 4 remake. So this, the story, everything within the walls of the story is going to be the exact same. The, you know, models are similar. They're very chibi. They're very small, sort of like how it was on the DS. However, that doesn't exclude new mechanics from being introduced or I guess not new mechanics like I don't expect us to have like some kind of mega or dynamax in this game I think it's gonna be the exact same but as far as VGC mechanics like dynamic speed changes if you tailwind that same turn you get the benefit fairy typing I believe we're still gonna have fairies in this game it would make no sense for them to revert the fairy type and new moves we've seen new moves get used in the trailer I think that they're going to introduce modern mechanics into an old game and that's what we're getting and i'm perfectly fine with that that's that's at least my take on it now getting into the timeline as to why i believe we're actually going to be moving to this game is we're definitely not moving to arceus it's been confirmed to be a single player game and it's releasing in january which pretty much every vgc game has released in november the year prior to it being the new format so if we look at the calendar of game releases Let's actually go pretty far back up to, let's let's start off with um, X and Y. We could actually do this all the way back to uh, 2009 with Platinum, but we'll, we'll do X and Y. So, X and Y releases in 2013. The year of 2013, we're actually still playing uh, VGC 2013 on Black and White 2. Now... It releases in October, which is just, a, you know, shy of November. Uh, and in 2014, just a couple months after release, we switch over to VGC 2014, obviously, which is played on X and Y. Now we play VGC, uh, VGC 2014 on X and Y. Uh, we have one year of X and Y. And then in 2014, in November, 
Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire drop. In 2015, just a couple months after the release of that game, we actually switch over to uh, the 2015 rule set, which is on Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. We play that from 15 to 16 because a new generation is being created. Now, in late 2016, we actually get Sun and Moon. We don't play that for 2016. We're still playing uh, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire because this is released in November. 2017 is when we start playing Sun and Moon. We play Sun and Moon until Ultra Sun Ultra Moon releases in November 2017, and then for 2018 and 2019, because the new generation is being made, we're on Sun and Moon still. We actually do get a game in 2018 for Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, but like I said, that's 100% a spin-off game, sort of like how Legends Arceus is, uh, with like different mechanics and such. But yeah. And then 2019, we get Sword and Shield. Releases in November. Next year, from 2020 to 2021, as you know, we are playing Sword and Shield. We get the Isle of Armor DLC, which essentially, I mean, and also the Crown Thunder, which essentially expands the game to have somewhat of a national decks format because we do regional than national. Uh, of course, there is no national decks in the game, but you see what I mean. So we're overdue for switching over to a new game. If this game releases November 19th of 2021, it would stand to reason that in 2022, for the 2022 VGC rule set, we'd switch over to Di uh, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. Now, another reason that a lot of people actually believe that we won't be switching over is because of the limited decks. Now, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, if it is a faithfully retold story, that would imply that the decks is pretty much the exact same. I believe, and I'm, you know, this is no way of, I have no information on this, but this is my opinion. Um, it'd be cool and all if we actually had a throwback to previous VGC format, which the first VGC format was in Platinum. It would be cool if we just had a full season throwback where we just play that again, and I wouldn't really mind it, but it wouldn't attract new players, and I don't really see that being a thing that they do. I think it would be more likely than not that since Generation 4, did include older generation Pokemon in their decks. Like we can go and see like, um, where is it? I don't know where it, you could like, you could find like Rapidash and stuff like older generation Pokemon in the region. It would stand to reason that because that game came out before generations five, six, seven, eight, that in the post game or maybe through bank or whatever, we may be able to transfer in some newer Pokemon. Of course, that would be limited considering the new approach they're going with the no national decks thing. So I think that in order to shake up the format, they may in fact allow us to trade in like, I don't know, let's say like Dragapult can be transferred in. Let's say like um, Darmanitan can be transferred in. Of course, you wouldn't be able to do that till after the game or till after the main story to preserve the you know integrity of the remake. But for competitive reasons, that would make sense. And in fact, that's how some other games worked. If you don't know, for um, Pokemon Sun and Moon, we only had the regional decks for the longest time. And then when Bank finally got compatibility with that game, we were actually able to transfer in Pokemon that you couldn't catch in the game. I believe this applied for, I forget what Pokemon it was. I, I don't think you could get like Jellicent in that game or something, but you could like transfer it in. There were a lot of Pokemon that they did that for. So I think that's what's gonna happen here. Uh, granted, you know, they could always just not, <laughs> but I think it'd be really interesting if they didn't, uh, because then we would only have a few fairy types, like fairy types that were available in the generation four games. It's pretty much just Togekiss. I actually, I think it's straight up just Togekiss. Um, think you might've been able to get Meryl if I remember correctly. Gardevoir was probably available. So like, there'd be like three, there'd be like three fairy types, which wouldn't make sense. I think we're going to be able to transfer in Pokemon from other games. Um, and it would make sense if you could, tr it would also make sense if you could still transfer in Pokemon from like gens three, two, and one upwards. So I don't see why they wouldn't do it for the reverse. So yeah, uh, that, that's another thought that I had. Some people might say, oh, well, why wouldn't we just continue playing on sword and shield up until generation nine and they just update the game. So the, you know, so like the, the entirety of the national decks is available. Well, first of all, it's Game Freak. They're not going to do that. They're not going to give us the update that we want and or deserve where they just give us every Pokemon in Sword and Shield, thus giving us a true national decks and thus a third format. 
Like, we're definitely not going to see Honchkrow introduced into Sword and Shield as much as I want that. But yeah, I think that it's the most likely case that Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, while it might not look like a main series game, is being counted as a main series game, even though it's being developed by a third party. I'm of the opinion that since it's a remake, they just wanted to divert their, you know, their biggest brains or their biggest uh, minds and people in Game Freak to work on this game while the remake was handled by a third party company, which I'm perfectly fine with. I don't really care. Maybe they make it better than Game Freak would. So yeah, in summary, it's a faithful story, but in generation four, we had EV training, we had the items, we had the X items, we had everything that we had in modern competitive Pokemon. Granted, a few items were missing, you know, like eject pack and stuff, but they did say that the modern conveniences of the Pokemon series would be available. And it's about time we switched over. So that, that's my summary of reasons why I personally believe we're gonna be switching over. I know this was like an unscripted video and like not generally what I typically do for my channel. I'm mostly just competitive stuff, but this seemed like something to, that was like a topic that people weren't really certain of and what I, I'm pretty certain like I'm pretty certain we're moving over of course I don't have 100% certainty but I'm pretty certain we're moving over so I want to give my thoughts out there as someone who's been through a couple of game cycles with VGC so yeah if you guys enjoyed leave a like if you guys didn't enjoy go ahead dislike I don't really care comment down below your thoughts and I'll see you guys in the next one bye